welcome to IFA Island Discs, where a local faith leader or representative shares with us the music that they love and its personal significance to their lives. Four tracks are chosen and a wild card, an extra choice voted to our guest to provide just a little more scope. In the style of the famous radio program, I'll unveil each piece of music in turn and our guests will share little about their selection. Perhaps we'll discover some new music together and undoubtedly we'll get to know each other just a little bit more. As you can see on screen, my guest today is Jean Fowler. A very warm welcome, Jean. Thank you, Peter. It's nice to be here. It's lovely to have you with us. Jean, and a few words to introduce Jean. Jean is a pagan priestess and a legal celebrant. She serves as honorary pagan chaplain at the University of Edinburgh and is also a board member of IFA. With her husband Jim, she established the annual Scottish Pagan Federation Conference in Edinburgh in 1992, and this continues to this day. As we'll soon discover, Jean's musical tastes are diverse. And I'm delighted that you're here with us today, Jean, to share uh, your sense of self through the songs that you've chosen. Thank you once again for joining us. Thank you. Before for we before we dive into the musical choices, uh, I'd like to ask, first of all, um, how easy or difficult was it to represent those things that are important to you through five musical choices? How did you find the experience? Um, it wasn't it wasn't too bad, actually. Um, I thought a little bit about things, but they, they seemed to sort of come in a natural order. So it wasn't too bad at all. So I've had an organic process of selection. Thank you. To our listeners and, and to our uh, watchers, I guess, or, or viewers, you could call them. Um, unfortunately, we aren't able to share excerpts of Jean's musical choices due to copyright. But the list of um, music that Jean has selected will be available um, next to this video uh, on social media, links to uh, YouTube uh, uh, versions of the, uh, the songs and the music. So please do listen in to the tracks there and uh, that will provide uh, additional insight into to Jean's choices. So without further ado, we will dive into your playlist for life, Jean. Yeah? And I'll bring up uh, our visual cue for your first track. And your first track is Catch a Falling Star by Perry Como. Um, I suppose this was probably one of the first musical things I was aware of. My mother was an avid radio listener um, when I was small and she would also sing along to the music, which encouraged me in turn to sing along to the music. So I kind of found this one, um, it kind of it took me through my very first baby steps, as it were, at school. I remember even singing this in the school playground and my other classmates must have been <laughs> terrified or amazed. <laughs> um, I, I felt I was alone, but um, the fact of uh, Catch a Falling Star, that supported me in lots of ways. Um, it's like, just in case you find yourself all alone, you've got a pocket full of stardust. So that, I suppose, um, seemed to mean quite a lot to me. My dad was quite influential in things too. He also liked to sing. Um, he, I think he thought he was a sort of Perry Como, Frank Sinatra, or <laughs> one of these people. Um, so I, in a way, I was taking a bit of my mum and a bit of my dad in this pocket full of stardust to school to kind of give me confidence and, and help me um, in my first days at school. Um, I think it, it carried on a little because you find that things come up in the radio every now and again. So every time it would come up, I would think, well, well, yes, I remember that. And all the feelings would come back, which was lovely. Um, and actually, after you asked me to look out a playlist, I thought, I don't have this number in the house. And I was dusting somewhere and this cassette tape fell down and it actually was Perry Como and it actually has Catch a Falling Star on it. So, so I, it was a bit of synchronicity 
in a way. Yeah. It's really amazing to hear you uh, talk about that. We describe it often as a flashback feeling when we listen to a piece of music that has a personal significance to us. And uh, it brings us back to the time and place where we first heard that piece of music and all the memories uh, and associations that we have off with the, the, the track. But you touched upon your childhood, uh, Jean, and uh, how important this song was, particularly at that point. Uh, can you tell us a wee bit about your childhood? What was it like? Um, well, I was an only child. Um, I was brought up in the, the Church of Scotland, so my kind of first spiritual awakenings, I suppose, were due to the Church of Scotland. Um, my dad eventually became an elder in the church, um, so I went along to Sunday schools and, and things there. Um, um, yeah, and sort of, I, I think eventually became a Sunday school teacher. Um, trying to think around about 16 I started to think well I'm not quite you know I'm not quite sure that because I always sort of felt that if I wanted to talk to Jesus this I would just talk to him um this idea of going through a minister and the sort of male the maleness of it I suppose at that time made me feel a wee bit uncomfortable so I sort of searched about and read a lot of books um and eventually I sort of started to realize you know there's a lot many more religions out there and many more beliefs um but it wasn't until i kind of read some books about paganism that i started to think well that's closer because it's got nature in it it's got a, a, a duality of a uh, godhead so that was when i kind of took my steps into into paganism really um, my dad had always taken me outdoors quite a lot so he would go fishing and I would go with him. But instead of fishing, I was picking wildflowers or playing with lambs in the field or doing something else, um, involving myself in nature when I could. Yeah. It's lovely to hear your, your, your spiritual evolution from the religion you grew up with to how you uh, connected with and have grown, uh, grown with paganism. And that's really lovely to, to learn about, Jean. Thank you for sharing. And, and for sharing Catch a Falling Star, and we move from star to moon with your <laughs> second choice. <laughs> and that is By the Light of a Magical Moon by T Rex. Yeah, um, I think in searching, I found that certain music touched me, and at that time it was Tyrannosaurus Rex and it was quite acoustic music. They later went into more electronic, um, although I think Magical Moon is a crossover. It does have it does have electronic music in it. Um, again, it's kind of cosmic, I suppose. And once more, I suppose, my dad features a wee bit in that um, because it, we were out one day, I think we were out at a fairground or something, coming back and it was dark. And I was just a small toddler in arms and uh, looking up at the moon and saying, oh, daddy, can I have that nice balloon up there? And he said, I'd get that for you if I could. You know? <laughs> and so, so once again, moon, moon features, I suppose, um, in my, my life quite, quite a lot. Um, within paganism, the moon, the moon goddess features quite a lot too. So I suppose dancing by the light of the magical moon, it just came naturally. Um, yeah, T-Rex were one of the, the influential things in my sort of middle years, I suppose, <laughs> not, not, but uh, yeah, late teenage, early 20s, yeah. One of the lovely things about uh, listening, and of course I had the privilege to listen in advance to your playlist before we uh, come together to talk about it, is not only the diversity of tracks that you've chosen, but also the diversity of music by the artists that you've selected. And um, my knowing of T-Rex is um, uh, music which is slightly different to the track that you've chosen. So it's lovely to learn of the artist's range of music and also yeah. your connection to, to their music and yeah, I get to your family. Yeah, again, um, I got, I, 
my husband bought me some T-Rex, so it's again, it's synchronicity. Um, a lovely picture disc of Metal Guru. <laughs> so it's an EP, Metal Guru. I got that for Christmas, so that was nice. <laughs> it always surprises me just the number of synchronicities when we um, when we search out those things that are important to us. It's really lovely to hear. And it was really lovely earlier to hear by the light of a magical moon, uh, which I listened to on YouTube. And our, our viewers will have the chance as well to connect with it um, over and above or around our discussion today. Thank you. Our third choice um, really raised an eyebrow for me. <laughs> um, not only in terms of the artist, but also the, the gentleness of this piece. Nothing else matters. Why did you choose uh, this as your third choice, Jean? I think it's. It, I find it quite. I found it quite an inspirational um, piece. Again, it seemed to come at a time when there was a wee bit of you know being a pagan wasn't easy, wasn't an easy road, um, and sometimes you'd come. A, against um, prejudices and, and and so on, like maybe in the media and, and things things that weren't always pleasant. Um, and the portrayal of paganism wasn't always as it is now. Um, so that supported me. It, it, there's words in it, um, never careful what they, what they say. So it's like, don't, you know, stick true to, to your, your own beliefs and your own self identity, I suppose. Um, so that again reinforced the kind of um, inner strengths, I suppose, that you, you can find to to carry on in life. If, if things, if there's any adversity or anything that you find hurtful or, or, or distasteful, it's, you know, the, the music is there sort of saying, yeah, you be true to yourself kind of thing, in a way. So, That's it. That's an important um, solace that we often find in music is our ability to connect to what the artist is expressing and to reflect that in to our own lives and our, our own experiences. You mentioned the difficulties that, that you find in terms of the reactions of others. Can you share a bit more about that, how that was and how that affected you, Jean? Yeah, well, I think people didn't take paganism seriously. Um, especially in you know the year. I mean, I, I thought, started in my late teens, early twenties to be involved in that. And at that time, the press could only lump everything together as bad. And Satanism, black magic, and, and paganism was lumped in there as well. Um, so these were these were kind of dark times, I suppose, in a way. Um, you had to you had to believe in in yourself and believe in and what you were doing and, and where you were going in life. Um, so I, I, the music to me means, you know, you, you're you on the right path, just stick to your, your path. You, you know, it's, um, it just kind of reinforces that inner belief and that inner strength um, to, sort of get through situations in a way. Yeah, it's uh, amazing the power of music uh, mm, to absolutely. support us in, in difficult times. And I think many of us, I'm sure those listening in and watching today will have tracks that are, are tremendously important to themselves that have taken them through difficult times yeah. and difficult experiences. It's lovely to hear how this track connects with you in that sense. And it's a beautiful piece of music to you, I must mm. say. I think it's, it's quite powerful in the fact that there's a slow lyrical, but there's a strong a strength to it as well, which I, I took from, from that music. Certainly, uh, I, I heard as well, um, both a vulnerability and a strength in what was expressed in this track. And uh, it's lovely to hear that resonance and uh, how it's provided you with solace in some of the difficult days, Jean. Thank you for sharing. Metallica and, and friends do uh, uh, jump on to YouTube and um, watch it for yourself. There are many lovely performances there. Our fourth track is A Vision. A vision shared by two people uh, who, col who have collaborated in a, very, in a very unique way to provide this piece. Would you like to introduce it, Jean? Yes, um, I think this was, 
a, a, a pagan friend introduced me to this music. Um, I went to visit her and her husband, or my husband and I went to visit them. And this music hit us as we opened the front door. And we said, oh, this is, this is amazing music. And she said, oh yes, it's, it's Hildegard von Bingen. And uh, being a fellow pagan, you, you think, well, yeah, this is beautiful music. And, and when she explained the, the life of Hildegard von Bingen, and she too fought against, I think, adversity, being a woman and leading a, a group of nuns. Um, but they used to dance and they used to enjoy their music and it, it seemed in a very pagan way, in a very open and expressive way that they, they would do so. Um, a, a friend even described the, the fact that they would wear little flowery crowns, which often pagans wear at, at festivals and, and gatherings. Um, and so it, it seemed, gosh, you know, it's a, a kindred spirit in a way, although of many centuries ago and um, a, different, a different belief to what I now I then held. Um, but also Richard Caesar's music had such a, a powerful way of bringing the past into the present um, and such a powerful spiritual impact, I think I felt um, when I first heard it. And even today when I still, I still listen to it. Um, so I, I think Vision had a kind of, um, I don't know, very um, moving, very powerful effect on me um, at that time. This friend also um, has a, a, a place in Brittany where we would visit and uh, we would often go to a little convent near there for the Sunday Mass and listening to <laughs> the nuns singing was also, you know, it's, it seems strange for a pagan, but you know, it's, it, it kind of uh, just expresses and pulls everything together in a way that, you know, we're, we're, we may believe separate things, but music touches us all. Um, and even the magic of the mass done in Latin in this little convent, the tinging of the bells and, and things like that was quite, quite amazing. It is amazing how music can reach us in so many different ways and touch us in uh, equal, equally diverse uh, range of, uh, of expressions as well. If I were to ask you, Jean, on a very personal level, what does paganism mean for you? Uh, what would you say? How would you describe your um, beliefs and your values? Um, it's, I suppose it's very difficult to put things into words, but it's just, it's just the essence of, of my being. Now, I can imagine myself not being a pagan. To me, it's it, it it's. I look at the world and I look at nature, and everything that my beliefs encompass is is out there. I suppose it's it's the same for for Christians in a way or any other belief system. They look out there and see what their gods or gods have created in a way, in a sense. Um, creation is is a very exciting, expansive thing. I mean, even harking back to the catch a falling star. I mean, in recent times, I've uh, listened to Professor Brian Cox talking about the the universe, and that that totally excites me. The the concept of the of the universe and its potential. Um, and the, the little phrase that he used once was that we're all stardust, which that, that to me is very powerful too. So I guess, you know, that's, that's about the best way I can express um, my feelings. Expressed really beautifully as well. I really love the, the sense, um, and I can see it in your expression and how you were when you talked about uh, the joy of creation and also the uh, uh, the expansive possibility that exists within that. And uh, certainly when I listened to Vision a little earlier, I felt a sense of that, uh, of the aesthetic in what was represented by Richard and his music connecting to Hildegard and its uh, 
Yeah, it's a beautiful piece. Beautiful film. Thank you for sharing a little bit of your of your faith path with us in in relation to it. We have, and if we, if we could do this in graphics, maybe it might be overlaid. We would have flashing lights here. We would have a red pulsating wild card, which is really, uh, to be frank, our opportunity to give just a little bit more space to enable you to have a fifth choice of music uh, to add to your playlist. And your fifth choice is Rebel Jesus by Kelly Weil. Mm. Like, tell us a wee bit about why you chose this team. Yeah, um, I'm quite fond of um, folk music and the the Albion band. And we, my husband and I, have collected a series of the Albion Christmas band music, and this one features on one of these albums. And uh, it's it's the earthiness of of the music, and the, there's a lot of Morris tunes in here. Um, my husband used to do with the, he used to be with the Lothian Morris men, so we we kind of get a wee bit <laughs> around the festive time. We sort of um, get these albums out, and it sort of gets us into the kind of Morris folk music mode again. Um, but this particular track um, it sings about um, it's 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 a wee, a wee line that catches you unaware. I think. And it caught me unaware, and I think that's how it stood out, was that, that, um, that she's a, a, a heathen and a pagan on the side of the rebel Jesus. And it, it made me kind of think, well, I suppose my pathway had been a wee bit rebellious in some ways. So coming back to this, it all sort of ties it in quite nicely in a way that you know, he, he was a rebel as well. So I, I, it makes you think, well, um, Perhaps most um, people of, of, of different religions, there's there's a rebellious streak in there. Most like Jesus, Muhammad, there could have been this. They had to they had to take themselves away from the the norm and the the the, um, the pathway that everybody else was treading at that time to sort of go out there and profess their beliefs and. That's how I suppose people began to follow a different pathway. So it, it seemed that it was not too dissimilar from my own my own way of sort of in a way rejecting Christianity, but then finally sort of finding that you know there are there are so many similarities and so many in so many faiths and beliefs that uh, it's. We, we are we're we're all one in a way, but we just don't realise it. Certainly more part to the rebel heart, Jean. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, a wee bit of a rebel. <laughs> I, I think uh, I think it's good to be a wee bit of a rebel, personally. Mm -hmm. <laughs> You've taken us to a selection of music representing um, your connection with family your sense of solace that you've acquired for music at times of difficulty, and also music that connects to your faith path, to your values and to what you believe in. And it's a lovely, diverse uh, mix that takes us back to the concept of um, diversity, of pluralism and to coexistence, particularly in your last track. Jean Fowler, I'd like to thank you for sharing with us today your playlist for life and for revealing a little of your memories and the music that has walked with you during uh, uh, during your life so far. Thank you, Jean. Thank you. It's been my pleasure. Thank you. Thank you.